Lanny Davis would have calculated whether the risk benefit analysis of releasing that tape that you heard where he's talking with Donald Trump about that hush payment for the Playboy model. So they must have thought it was going to help Michael Cohen somehow. Why else would they have done that? It's a good question, Allison. You know, we don't know right now exactly the contours of the federal investigation of Michael Cohn specifically. So we don't know what he might be charged with. It's possible at this point that his lawyer does. And it's very unclear whether or not Michael Cohn really has information of value to provide to the government and whether or not they are in any type of serious negotiations with the government about him cooperating in some other investigation related to the campaign or related to the president. So at this point, it does seem inconsistent from a lawyer's perspective to be so public and to be publicly sparring with the president if, in fact, they really are trying to reach some type of agreement. The two uh, issues seem incompatible. I'm a little less surprised maybe than you are that Michael Cohen made questionable decisions. Well, in, in, in questionable strategic well, decisions. Fair, with, but he with does have life. a legal team. I, 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 I understand that. Questionable I understand that. But if you read the Washington Post story this morning, Errol, it does seem that a lot of this is just based on the fact that, that Michael Cohen had his feelings hurt about the way the president and his legal team have referred to him or treated him over the last six months. That's right. Look, people are people. Uh, even if they do distasteful things, even if they do inconsistent and unpleasant and unprofessional things. And I think Michael Cohen's done all of those things. Uh, so, so he's now in, in a very, very tough position. I mean, remember, the raid was his all everything, right? It was his computers. It was his home. It's a safe deposit box, 16 cell phones. I don't know what the heck that could possibly have been about. <laughs> he could be in more trouble than any of us could even imagine. And uh, when you're in that deep of a, a hole, you know, you're going to do anything you can to get out of it. So the, the advice that any lawyer would give him, he just likes to have a backup. You know, we as journalists, there's some of us who like to do that. You want to just make sure you have a record of, of what you've said. Uh, in his case, though, I, I think it's going to really blow up in his face. This is not... this. It, it, it doesn't fit well. It, 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 you, you lay that alongside the 16 cell phones. You lay that alongside the, the you know, the, creating these LLCs to, pl to pay off uh, the mistresses of his client. It, it all looks very bad. Yeah. Very bad. Best, best case, I, 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 I would tell you, Dodge, maybe when it comes to having cell phones, Michael Cohen just can't get enough. I'm oh, you like I there? like right. that. All right. All right. All right. We're going to end that conversation because that one can't go any better. <laughs> Gary, I, the timing is interesting yesterday, it, it, you know, in the wake of the Michael Cohen situation, which clearly the president is agitated about, his allies in Congress, I'm talking about members of the House Freedom Caucus, Jim Jordan and others, have now submitted articles of impeachment for Rod Rosenstein, the deputy attorney general. Your thoughts? It's really shameful, John. The, there's nothing that the Deputy Attorney General has done that rises to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors, which is the impeachment standard. It's clear that these individuals in Congress are really playing politics with the intelligence information related to the national security investigation that was conducted of uh, Carter Page and the Russia investigation more broadly. Um, they are holding the Deputy Attorney General responsible responsible because they know politically that they really can't go after the special counsel Mueller because there has been legislation introduced to protect him and it's widely understood that that would be catastrophic if uh, politically if he were uh, removed yeah. or if the president put more pressure on him so instead what they're doing is they're going after Rod Rosenstein who has really shielded the special counsel's investigation from my perspective from this political influence and so he has been clear about conducting oversight and he has put himself out front that has made him the target and this is another example of I learned it from you dad this is the Repub House Republicans doing deflect and divide because the whole question of obstruction of justice let's raise the specter of impeachment however unlikely and by the way it is unlikely that they would succeed and it's just layers of hypocrisy and ignoring the real issue also evidenced by Devin Nunez House uh, Intelligence Committee chairman not bothering to look 
at the unredacted FISA warrant that he himself subpoenaed and made such a big political issue and pressured the White House to release. It shows how much of this is kabuki, and it, it's really toxic. Very, very quickly, Errol. Hasn't the Department of Justice also turned over an unprecedented amount of the documents to the House Intel Committee? I mean, yeah. they have opened the kimono hundreds, hugely, more hundreds than they ever have. thousands of documents, including eight, over 800,000 documents about Hillary Clinton. I mean, you, you talk about deflection. The, the, the wasting of government resources is sort of a... Uh, a side misdemeanor, if not crime, in, in all of this stuff, politically speaking. And they're putting this forward not as a privilege vote, which means that they're not forcing a vote on this, which just right. goes to show all they want us to do is talk about it. Hmm. They don't necessarily have the guts to force the issue on that. Mission house. accomplished. Right. Play the base. All right. Yeah. Thank One you. and all, thanks very much. The White House banned CNN's Caitlin Collins from an open event in the Rose Garden. This is something, guys. Off with the president of the European Con Commission. Here's the moment. Okay, so after that happened, Caitlin Collins was called into Bill Shine's office. He is the new White House communications chief and the former Fox News executive. Also there was White House press secretary Sarah Sanders. And Caitlin says that they told her that she would be banned from an open press Rose Garden event with the president because her questions were deemed by them, quote, inappropriate. In a statement, Sarah Sanders said Caitlin shouted questions but went on to say the White House supports a free press and asks that everyone be respectful of the presidency and guests at the White House. Now, to be clear, other reporters who were in the room said that Caitlin was perfectly respectful. You heard it for yourself. Yeah, you I mean, you heard it for yourself. You could hear her tone. She actually wasn't, she was trying to get the president to answer. She wasn't rude. She wasn't shouting. That's how it works. And I know that that scrum could have sounded sort of chaotic if you're not in there. That is sort of standard operating procedure for how it works to try to get the president to answer a question. So the CNN response for this, uh, which was released, reads, in part, this decision to bar a member of the press is retaliatory in nature and not indicative of an open and free press. We demand better. The White House Correspondents Association and journalists from other outlets, including Fox News, to their credit, have expressed solidarity with Clay Caitlin blasting the White House for their decision. I have many feelings about this, but let me just say one thing. I, I do not think Caitlin in any way wants to be part of the story. Of course not. She wants to get the story, which is why she was in there just asking questions. Operating for everybody. I mean, she was the pool reporter. Yeah. She was asking on behalf of all the networks. But kudos to our colleagues in the free press. Kudos to Fox News. Kudos to Brett Baer and John Roberts and Jay Wallace at Fox News for standing in solidarity with CNN. Because I remember in 2009 mm -hmm. when this same thing happened, when the Obama administration tried to mm -hmm. cut Fox News out of uh, sort of a round robin interview and ABC and CNN stood in solidarity with Fox then and said you cannot do that to members of the free press and now Fox is returning the favor which we really appreciate and we are all supposed to be in it together right. even though we're competitors we are all supposed to be in the free press and together. I bet a lot of White House reporters will continue to ask questions good let's bank on that all right, so meanwhile, today is the deadline for reuniting those families who were separated their children. So joining us now is the former acting director for U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, known as ICE, from 2013 to 2014, John Sandwick. Mr. Sandwick, thank you very much for being here. You know, we've been asking for specific numbers from the Department of Homeland Security for weeks, months, okay? And they have never really been able to give them. But on Tuesday, we got the best specifics that we had been given to date. And here, I want to put it up for people. So there were more than 2,500 children who were separated from their families. One of the officials had said less than 3,000, given us that vague number. 1,012 families, they say, have been reunited now by the government. 463 parents of separated children are no longer in the U.S have basically already been de deported. 191 parents will not be reunited because they had criminal records or refusal to reunite. We don't know what that means. 260 cases await further investigation. In other words, we don't really know 
what's happening with those kids or where they are necessarily. Do you have any faith that today, the deadline, that all of those families can be reunited? Depends on how you define uh, all those families, right? The administration itself is trying to find, you know, define what the class is. By that I mean identify, well, these parents are not necessarily eligible to be reunited with their children. I think you also saw 460 families were actually deported, so they can't be reunited. But other than that, apparently 1,600 parents will be reunited with their kids by today's deadline. Um, and I think the judge commended them for this, but only because things were so messed up. You know,